If you're looking for how to create gradients in Photoshop, you're in the right place. Let's get started. Firstly, I'm going to make a shape by selecting the Shape tool and just make a simple square. If you want to make a different shape, you can click and hold the Shape tool and select your desired shape. I'll then click Fill on the top left of the window and select the Gradient option, which is this one here. If you're not sure which one to go with, hover your cursor over the different modes and the tooltip should pop up. Now I'll go down to our layer and double click on the thumbnail. A gradient window will appear and you'll see a few options, but first I want to change the gradient colours. I'll double click on the gradient and it'll bring up a new window. Let's go through all the different options on this one. The most important part of gradient manipulation is understanding how the colours, opacity and transition points work. There are top and bottom handles. The top ones affect the opacity of each gradient point and the transparency transition harshness. By clicking on the top handle, I can now adjust the transparency of the gradient on the left hand side. Wherever I move the opacity slider will be the point where the opacity transition starts. The bottom handles do largely the same except with colours. Moving them closer together or further apart will affect the transition harshness between the two colours. There's also the option to add additional colours by clicking between the bottom handles. To select the colours, double click on the handle and this will open a window where you can choose the colour your gradient point will be. If you have a certain gradient that you've made or which you'd like to reuse in the future, you can click here to make a new preset. Or, if you've downloaded some, you can import them using this button. Thankfully, in the latest update of Photoshop 2020, you're able to create gradients based off of Photoshop's new presets. There are loads of colours to choose from and many variants within each colour. However, using presets doesn't prevent you from modifying the colours once it's been selected. Now once you've come up with your desired gradient colours, you can hit OK to apply them. This next one may be a little trickier to demonstrate visually, as video compression on YouTube may make the difference kind of unnoticeable. When applying a gradient that contains two or more colours, you may encounter banding which is where each colour appears choppy and in layers, rather than in a smooth transition. Luckily, Photoshop has a feature within the gradient window called Dither. What this will do is mix in some noise to help the gradient blend more smoothly. However, this is sometimes not enough to fix it, so one of the best ways to better display a gradient is by increasing the bit level of your canvas. Chances are, if you go over to the image menu and hover over Mode, you'll see that your mode is 8 bits per channel. It's best to change this to 16 bit, because it increases the number of tones available for a single colour. In terms of print, an 8 bit colour space will give you 256 possible tonal values for each colour. That's cyan, magenta, yellow and black. Or if you're using RGB, red, green and blue each have 256 values. But setting your colour space to 16 bit will increase your tonal value amount for each colour from 256 to a whopping 65,536. Your gradient should look immediately better now, and although you might see some visual banding still on the screen, it's usually Photoshop's limitation of showing it on the screen when there is actually no banding at all especially on consumer equipment, which is usually 8-bit anyway. We can double-click onto the layer to bring up the gradient properties again. We can then see that there are properties to change the angle, which we can either do by spinning the dial, or typing in the desired angle. And if for any reason we want to mirror the colours, we can just click Reverse. Now let's take a look at the Style menu, and we can choose between Linear, Radial, Angle, Reflected, and diamond. We're currently in linear, which is a direct transition from one colour to another in a given direction. Radial sets one colour point in the middle, transitioning to the outer colour. 
Angle sets a color gradient wrapping around the image starting with one color and transitioning into the other, with a harsh line between where they meet. Reflected is a line of one of the colors, with either side of the line transitioning into the secondary color. Diamond is similar to radial, except it's more diamond shaped. Scale simply increases or decreases the transition harshness between the colors you've picked. The best way to demonstrate it is in the linear gradient style. The lower the scale, the sharper the gradient, and vice versa. Click OK, and don't worry if you feel like you need to change it in the future. Because Photoshop generates shape properties, you can simply double click again on the layer thumbnail to bring up the new options menu. And that's how to make a new gradient in a shape. But what if we want to overlay a gradient onto the shape of a graphic? Here's a transparent image of a cat. To add the overlay, I'm going to firstly select the layer, then go to the FX in the bottom right hand corner, and select Gradient Overlay. A window will pop up, and we then have all the same options as before, but with a few additions. I'll just go and change my gradient to something I like. There's now the option to change the blending mode, which makes the gradient act more like a filter based on what color it is, and it will affect the original layer. And changing the opacity has the effect of increasing the transparency of the gradients over the original image. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, and if you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to leave a comment. Thanks for watching.